Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Mobile Application Tester. We are in chapter five talking about automating your test executions and moving ahead with the next topic of it, which is 5.4, approaches for setting up an automation test lab. Further to add, and this is being the last topic, we are also adding more value from the approaches for setting up an automation test lab. We generally have understood this in our previous chapter that what sort of labs can be utilized for mobile testing. And we have two options to make use of, which is on-premises and remote. Now here we'll be talking about approaches to set up an automation within a particular test lab or an automation test lab altogether. Now when performing mobile application testing, developers and testers have choices around the devices test lab they would use to target their test automation against so we have definitely various choices and the choices are the on-premise device lab setup or the remote device test lab now various combination of these approaches can be applied on-premise device test labs are generally difficult and time consuming to maintain, having devices locally in parallel with emulators and simulators would best serve the earlier development and testing phases of the mobile app. At this point, we need to recall all the information which we have gathered from the previous chapters put together and then understand that yes, we do have certain drawbacks of having on-premise setup which could be really expensive to afford and at the same time, even if you have one, it would be certainly expensive to maintain it. But at the same time, you may not have all the devices in real time or real devices to try your test on right from the beginning of the testing or early stages of the life cycle. But here, you can certainly make use of simulators and emulators as discussed earlier to start earlier in your life cycle to begin with your testing. And then later, once you're done with all your basic needs of testing, you can finally try it in some of the limited set of real devices. Further to add on this, when reaching a more advanced stage of the app development, the teams need to perform a full regression test, functional test, and non-functional test, in fact. Now, these tests are best executed on a full device lab. There, this is where a remote device test lab is managed. Now, remote device test labs, again, we have explored in the previous chapter, so we won't be talking about it. If in case you have forgotten that, please go back to the chapter four and look into the lab setup tutorial to understand and recall more about it. Now, these are where the remote device test lab is managed, continuously updated and maintained in the cloud. So these are the remote uh, labs which are affordable at a minimal cost to rent only those devices which you want to run the test on or test your app on. Again, you can have your market strategy and market consensus done to select the real devices which you want to test on. Also, such remote devices test labs com complement on an on-premise device test lab and ensure that sufficient combination of devices and operating systems are available and up-to-date. By making sure use of commonly available remote device test labs, teams get access to a large set of supported capabilities including richer test reports and advanced uh, test automation capability. So we're just trying to highlight here that the remote test labs can really bring a great interaction to you and give you a great satisfaction and confidence when you try to run your test on them, because it can certainly give you various varieties and versions of the operating systems. And at the same time, you will have various other different real devices, which you can try it on. And then you have great results being shared, which can be very detailed in order to understand any sort of uh, flaws and omissions in the system and then try to rework on accordingly. Lastly, when executing at scale through a test automation framework or through a continuous integration job like CI, stability of the overall test lab is key for the test efficiency and reliability. Such labs are typically designed to ensure that devices and operating systems are always available and stable. Now the remote test labs are not always necessary in later development stages of the app. Well-designed and maintained on-premise device test labs can be as good as better than the remote device test lab. So generally the remote test labs will be very helpful at the early stages to initially try with the installation and try to test the application in a real-time environment.
but later you can certainly have some of the models which will be like you know you can purchase some of the devices and have it in your premises to test the same so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning